From the moment we wake up in the morning to when our head hits the pillow at night, we engage with electricity in some way or other. Think about it, the alarm clock goes off and then uh, you switch on the light and then maybe you turn on the kettle for breakfast, you make yourself a piece of toast, then you're listening to the radio on the way to school, then there's laptops and TVs and washing machines and refrigerators, the list goes on and on and on. And even going beyond all the appliances and, and gadgets and widgets that have become part of our everyday life, your very own body relies on electricity to work. The fact that you can see me, the fact that you can hear anything, is because of electrical impulses from your nerves being taken to your brain. And in fact, the very thought that you're thinking right now is electrical impulses. So bottom line is very helpful to understand electricity and how it all works. So let's have a quick look at how it does work. Tricky thing about electricity, you can't see it. So it's often quite hard to get your head around it. To help us with that, what we can do is use an analogy, something that is similar to or behaves in a similar way to electricity. What we're gonna choose is water. Let me give you a bit of an example here. Okay, if we wanted to understand, well, how does a kettle work? So when I flick the switch, it goes on, but what is the electricity doing that makes the kettle actually work? Now there's quite a few right answers to that, um, but let's have a look at the way that water behaves to get an idea of when something's not happening and when something is happening. Quick test, here we go. Tell me which one is more happening, more exciting, A, or B. Duh. Okay, let's try another one. This is now on the side of electricity. Which is more exciting? A or B? Okay, these are fairly obvious questions. Here's a bit one a bit more relevant for you. Which is more fun? A or B? Obviously the happening ones. Okay, so when you've switched something on and the electricity is actually making it work, that's exciting. So what is it about the electricity that makes it work? Well, back to that water analogy, the water in those slides was on the move. It was a happening thing. It was doing something. And in the same way with electricity, it's the fact that the electrical current is on the move. So let's take an example of a uh, electrical wire, just a piece of copper wire perhaps, and it is carrying a current. That is a flow of charge. We often are dealing with uh, wires and things like that, which would mean that we're dealing with electrons. So we could say it's a flow of electrons is not incorrect. The, the, the correct full definition is current is a flow of charge. Now that is quite similar in some way, if we consider the water analogy, to perhaps a river or our slide that we were looking at just now, where it's not just a puddle, it's not just a pond or a lake where there's water just like sitting there. This water is on the move. It's actually doing something that makes it much more exciting. So that's what current is. It's the flow of charge and it makes things work. Now we use the letter I for current in calculations, quite an interesting one. It actually comes from the French, intensité du courant, because the French dude who discovered it was called André Marie ampere and that is in fact where we get the name of the units. So I stands for intensity of current, just in case you've ever wondered that. I wondered for a long time as well, I just discovered the other day. And the amps is named after the dude who discovered that whole setup. So that's a little bit about current, the stuff that makes electricity work. But what is the stuff that makes current? Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper here. Once again, we're gonna have a look at electricity and water as an analogy. If we wanted to know the stuff of the river, what actually makes a river, what is, it, what is it made of? Well, it's not rocket science, okay? If we were to look under a microscope at the river, we would see loads of little water molecules, little Mickey Mouse shaped H2Os, and they're all flowing in the same direction, okay? That is what makes our current of water. That is the stuff that a river is made of. Now, if we were to do the same for our electrical current, so we look under a microscope at our wire, what are we gonna see? We're gonna see 
a whole bunch of other particles, not water particles, but we're going to see electrons. Okay, and they too are all flowing in the same direction, which makes our electrical current. Difference is, with the water, we're probably just going to see water particles. Hopefully there's not too much pollution and all that kind of stuff. But with the wire, there's not just the electrons. The electrons are flowing in and amongst a whole bunch of atoms. Those electrons actually come from the atoms. We call those electrons free electrons or delocalized electrons. You may have heard that phrase before. And they are the ones in the outer shells that are actually loosely bound to their main atom and they have the freedom to go wherever they want. So we can direct them all in one way and that is what causes our electrical current. So that is the stuff of current for water, obviously water particles, and for electricity or electrical current, it is electrons. Now, what is it about electrons that is in fact electrical? What makes them electrical and actually get that name electron? Well, it's the fact that they have charge. And once again, we've got a rather strange letter when we're dealing with it in equations. It's the letter Q. That comes from quantity of electricity they first discovered the fact that electrical uh, current was made up of these little packets, these little quanters. And they'd already used E for electric fields, I think it was. Um, and, uh, and so they chose the letter Q to represent the quantity of electricity, which is the charge. And discovered by none other than another French scientist, Coulomb, um, who came up with Coulomb's law and all that kind of stuff. So that's a little bit about charge. Now here's an interesting thing. We, we've got current that makes stuff happen. We've got charge that is the stuff of electricity. These two are very importantly related by this formula. I equals Q over T. Let me just clear away some of the clutter so you can see that nice and clearly. So I equals Q over T. What we're saying here is really that I, which is the current, is the amount of charge, so let's say the number of electrons, perhaps, that flows per second in a given amount of time. The amount of charge per unit second. Now, let's go back to our river analogy, perhaps just for a moment to understand this. When, when my kids were little, we lived in Johannesburg and we'd sometimes walk down to the little stream that was near our house. And normally, it was maybe four meters wide and uh, it had a gentle flow to it. But when one of those thunderstorms came down, you see this thing would grow to be 10, 15 meters wide and it was like the mighty Zambezi with rapids. The amount of water going down there made a much, much stronger current. In the same way, when Q increases per second, then we have a much stronger current. So I is equal to Q over T. Next question, well, how do we get the current to actually flow? The water's there, perhaps in the lake or wherever it is, but how do you get it to flow? Well, let's look at a laboratory example um, just to get a feel for this. Let's say I've got a trough of water to represent our lake, maybe, and it's sitting on the table like that. Now, what would I do? What would I do to that trough of water to make all the water flow in one direction if I wanted to make it flow to the right? Well, the simplest way to do that is just to tip it like that and then all the water is going to spill out it's going to make a wonderful huge mess but <laughs> we're going to get our currents to flow what have i actually done there i've created a potential difference i've made one side high the other side low so there's a difference in potential that makes the water want to go down why what made it go down was well, the same reason that rivers go down to the ocean what drives a river, what makes the water do what I've just uh, demonstrated on the little picture there? Gravity. Gravity is the driving force of a river. So, what do we need for our electrical example? Let's take a bulb. Now, I can't take my bulb and just sort of tip it to one side and expect the, the lights to come on. Uh, it doesn't work like that. We need a different, kind of, a different kind of slope in this case. We need an electrical slope, but it's still the same concept of potential difference, as you may well have heard before. Now, what provides that potential difference or that electrical slope is often the cell or the battery in the circuit. And we call that voltage. OK, 
case, not quite as complicated as the previous ones. Voltage is got the symbol V and is measured in volts. After not another French scientist, this time is an Italian physicist uh, called Alessandro Volta. And he was one of the first dudes who invented a battery, which was called a voltaic pile. Very interesting. Um, so that's how we get a slope in a circuit to create one side as a high uh, potential and the other side as a low potential. So let's have a look at that circuit and just get a quick picture of, well, how does it actually work? Let's consider an electron in the circuit there. Eddy the electron. Now, which way is it going to move? Which side of the battery, first of all, is positive and which side is negative? So you might be wondering, mm, maybe not sure. Now, I've got a nice little illustration for you uh, to, to help you work out the plus and minus. Here we go. What you'll need is simply three pens. Connect two of them together to make a long side. One for the short side, just like your battery. Then you take the long side, split it in half, and you can make a plus sign. Take the short one, put it on its side, and you've got a minus sign. <laughs> Nifty, isn't it? Okay, so we've got the plus and we've got the minus. Key question, which way is our electron going to go? Well, the negative electron, Eddie, is going to be repelled by the negative side of the battery. So he's going to run away from that side and he's going to run towards the positive side because he's attracted to that side. Okay? Interesting point here, which you may already know, is that we say that current flows from positive to negative, which is actually the opposite of what we've just looked at. That is what we call conventional current okay conventional current and it is because by definition by convention current is the flow of positive charge electrons are negative so they obviously flow the opposite to conventional charge so that's one little complexity that you that you need to be able to pick up on another interesting point uh, with voltages even though the the letters are easy to remember there's two other terms that we need to use for voltage, which you may come across. One is the voltage in the circuit itself. So like the bulb, the voltage across the bulb, which you'd measure with a voltmeter. And that we often refer to as the PD, which stands for potential difference, which is very similar to what we were saying earlier, talking about how the water goes from high to low. The other term is the voltage across the battery and that term is EMF which stands for electro motive force how many of you said electromagnetic force that's a common error so it's the force that gets the electrons motoring gets them moving okay so both of those terms EMF stands in for voltage and PD stands for voltage as well. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of an idea of how the, uh, how the circuit is involved with actually getting this current to flow. We have to provide a potential difference using a battery or a source. Now there is, again, a, an equation that helps us to connect voltage to the stuff that the current is made of, which is charge. And that equation, is this V equals W over Q. Again, let me just clear the clutter out of the way so you can see that nice and clearly. V equals W over Q. Let's just quick, quickly go through this so you can understand it. V being our voltage, the amount of voltage that you can often see that like on the side of the battery or even mains voltage is 220 volts. W in this stands, in this case, stands for the work done, or you could consider it to be the energy. And Q is obviously our charge. Now, to get our heads around what this voltage equals work per unit charge means, again, I want to talk to you about my little kids. So when they were, again, small, and uh, we're going through maybe a shopping mall, and there's one of those um, arcade games uh, on the side there, and they say, Daddy, Daddy, please can we play arcade games? And it's like, oh, class, that's a waste of money. Oh, let's go and buy an ice cream. Try and distract them or something like that. But then often they would persuade me, and they say, okay, let's go to one of those arcade game places. And there they sell coupons that you can go and uh, and, and play your game. So perhaps, you know, spend 50 Rand, get 50 coupons, and I become, as dad, 
like the battery. I am the bomb. <laughs> I've got all the coupons. And I then dish out a coupon to each of the kids. So they are now empowered with this little coupon. They've got a certain amount of energy, as it were, and off they go, ding 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 ding, like the little electron in the circuit, okay, goes and spends the money on the game, ding 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 ding, the light bulb comes on, they've spent their coupon, and then they come back for more, ding 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 ding, and they get another one, and I give them another one, and off we go again, do do around the circuit, they go and play a game, and then they come back to me again, until the battery runs out, and then we go home. Now, where this W comes in is, let's just say they were kept coming back, kept coming back, kept coming too quick, too quick. And I say, right, okay, go and play even more games. And I give them three coupons each. I've given them more energy. There's more stuff that they can do. So they can go and get super excited and play lots of games. So that would be a bigger battery, like a 10 volt battery compared to a five volt battery, gives each little coulomb of charge double the amount of energy that it would have had before. So that is what that V equals W over Q stands for. Now, quick recap, summary of things. Current is the flow of charge, which is given by the letter I, intensity of current, and the unit amperes or amps. Charge is the electrical property of matter, which comes in little bits, quantities, which is where the letter Q comes from, and it's given by the, the unit C for coulombs. And then lastly, voltage is the work done per unit charge or the energy given to each charge. And that is the letter V and the unit V for volts. The two other phrases of voltage that we need to know are PD, which is potential difference, which is the voltage in the circuit, and EMF, the electromotive force, which is the voltage of the cell or the source. And then lastly, the two equations that we come across, I equals Q over T, current is the amount of charge per unit second, and V equals W over Q. Voltage is the work done per unit charge. I hope you have found this enlightening. <laughs>